As you've seen from the thumbnail, we bought a mini. Hey, you kind. Well, come on. I mean, it's not particularly great. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this mini, we're going to sand it down, do a full respray and some funky color, which we'll find out later on in this film. Um, and then we're going to fit a full electric kit. Now we're going to take all the bits that are here. We're going to work with the Felton team to build this into their one of their bolt-in electric mini kits. Get it into this car, get it on the road for a good laugh. So if you like this channel, hit the subscribe button. Once you get to the end of the video, if you like it, give us a thumbs up or maybe a thumbs down and leave us a comment if there's anything we can improve on. So, let's go. Now this is an old Mini, as I've just told you, and it's actually in pretty good condition. There's not big rusty holes in the floor or anything like that. There's a couple of odd bits that have got to be done, like where old arches went and where an old roll cage went in it, which I think probably did need a roll cage in the Mini, to be honest. It has an engine bay, like most cars, which used to have an absolutely lovely A-series engine, which I'm sure everyone in the audience absolutely loves. Um, but they had they were renowned for some issues. You couldn't bore them out too big because you'd get issues with head gaskets. But also, they had this distributor cap in a really stupid place in the front. So if you went for a big puddle, the chance of the car would cut out. Or if you forgot to adjust your choke properly, it would cut out after if you are driving. So not particularly great. The interior on these is basic, but actually there's a lot more room in there than you think, but that's because obviously it negates some of the basic safety requirements of today's standards. And it has a boot. It's not a particularly big boot. You can't fit a set of golf clubs in it, but we don't take up much room in that when we do the EV conversion. So I'm gonna stop talking about the rickety old mini, and we're gonna talk through everything that goes into a full bolt-in mini kit. Now there is a huge amount of stuff that goes into an electric vehicle, and it's not just a battery pack, a motor and some other bits. There's so many individual little bits that have got to be designed, developed and produced to make a full bolt in plug and play kit. So let's go through all the bits here before they get assembled into a kit later on in this series. So I'm stood in the subframe. Now this subframe was produced by BMH, which is British Motor Heritage, and they actually produce this subframe from the original jigs. And the reason the kit comes with a brand new subframe is basically because it's a classic mini, so most of them have been rusted out, and then you're gonna remove the oil that comes out of the engine, so if it hasn't rusted out, it, it will have done. So, needs a new subframe. That has a cradle and bolts to it that holds a lot of key components, like the VCU, the inverter, the motor, lots of other bits, the radiator, all the cooling systems, and on, on the bottom of that, they put a bash guard because the chances are, with the Mini being some seven and a half seconds or quicker, not to 60, you're gonna smash it on the floor at some point, driving like a bit of a loon. Now, so some key components that sit within here, a bit like the brake vacuum pump. So what this does is this takes, well, it replaces the ICE engine's vacuum system by cr producing a negative pressure, which then goes into a little reservoir, so it doesn't kick in and off all of the time, and that then supports the brake servo, so your brakes stay maintained. Now, if you have a Mini that doesn't have a brake servo, with the additional regenerative braking, it will feel like it does. So the regenerative braking from the motor is a massive benefit on the braking capability of the Mini. You then have a small radiator, which is made by Ali Sport, little water pump and fan, because it doesn't need a huge amount of cooling for the motor system. Now, it can run fairly hot if there was an issue with this, in which the motor maxed out 180 degrees, the inverter maxed out 80 degrees, but that's all temperature controlled and limited in the VCU if there ever was an issue. Now, there's a PDU, which is a very new thing for a Mini, and what's the PDU? This is a power distribution unit, which is basically solid state. So this has power electronics in it that does the fusing, basically, so it'll monitor the amount of amps being drawn if there's an issue, it'll tell you there's an issue. Um, so it's a really clever little unit, and it means that you're not replacing fuses or relays if anything does go wrong in the future. Obviously, there's a huge amount of coolant pipes and fittings, there's a little tiny header tank here. I call it header tank, it's more of a fill-up point. The reason it's so small without a huge amount of expansion is because these vehicles don't run hot. So the hottest this coolant will probably ever get, maybe 60 degrees. At that point, it's not becoming a gas, it's not becoming steam, so it's not going to try and exit out of here and overpressure the system. We have some key bits, as you will all know, from an EV, which is the motor and gearbox and inverter. So this is a 70 kilowatt motor, outputs about 175 newton meters of torque, as well as goes up to 12,000 RPM, which is way more than the original A-Series engine would have ever gone. There's then the inverter. Now the inverter takes the HV in from the battery pack and outputs three-phase AC into the motor to power it. That, then, no, that is then coupled onto an adapter plate, which goes onto this six to one reduction gearbox. Now obviously you don't just need the gearbox, you also need drive shafts. So there's a custom set of drive shafts, which are here, which go onto the original Mini outsides, and they come with CV boots or joints that go on the inside, as well as all the brackets. So there's all the relevant different brackets with the power pushes, which 
go into them to give it a little bit of softening. There's a lot of people that will hard mount these motors, but then you really feel it through the car. So just putting some bushes in, whether they're black or purple bushes from there, makes a massive difference to the driving and what you can feel. Now this motor does, or the motor, this gearbox does have a little bit of a whine, so it does still sound like an original Mini. And this one's with an open diff. We haven't gone to a limited slip diff yet because we just haven't needed it. Moving on, when it all gets picked by the Felton team, they also get boxes of all the nuts and bolts. So every single thing is in the bill of materials to build the entire mini kit, start to finish in just a couple of days, including all the wiring harnesses are pre-made, pre-terminated. So they just plug and play within the battery pack and all the HV cables are pre-made. Now let's talk through the front battery pack. This sort of here is roughly all the bits that go into the front battery pack of the mini. So all the metal work has been designed and developed at Felton facility, it then gets welded, cleaned down, powder coated at the location as well, mainly because long, long time ago there was issues with the paint finish. So they wanted to make sure that every kit that's produced has the best paint finish possible and in four or five years down the line, the powder coat's not peeling off due to poor prep. There's then five battery modules that sit in the front. So these are a 355 VDA, which is a German standard battery module. Um, and this side is actually using things like the Jaguar I-Pace and a load of other vehicles. Now, this is a 12S configuration, 1P. So in here, there, for every, there's 12 cells, which is the 1P, and they're connected in series. So they then go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and then come out on these positive and negative points on the front of here, um, which these is roughly 50-ish volts, roughly fully charged. And there's a little connector in here, which is for the battery management system. Now, in this case, there is an Orion battery management system here, which sits in the front. There's also one that goes in the rear, because there's like a, satellite master thing going on. And you basically take all those cell taps and you plug them into these. This then reads every single cell tap and make sure that all the cells are doing their job correctly or playing ball. So they're all evenly, even voltage. And the reason you want to try and keep that as such an even voltage, if you end up with one cell at four volts and the rest are at 3.5, it will stop charging when the first cell hits its highest voltage. Meaning you've got a huge amount of capacity in the battery pack that's just not being used. So this will get those cells within 0.8 zero zero two so it's a crazy tight tolerance but lithium batteries have gone a long way from back in the days and now they can stay in crazy tight tolerances and get you the most amount of range state of charge as possible but the other thing it also does is it monitors the temperature of the battery to make sure it's not getting too warm because the battery gets too warm and it certainly needs to start limiting back to the discharge or the charge limit just to make sure the batteries don't get damaged because the key thing about the battery management system is make sure it stays safe number one but number two is maintain battery health so this battery pack goes on for 10, 20, 30 years at good capacity and good health, long-term, reliably. So the BMS runs a massive role in that. It also has a current sensor, so it can sense how much power or current's been drawn in and out of the battery pack. So it can do calculations around how much power and how much range you have left. Now these modules go on to cooling plates, or solid plates in the Mini, which are these. Now these are structural units that tie into the battery pack and you bolt modules either side. They then have a heat transfer pad, which is this thing, basically. It's a bit like you're using a computer CPU to transfer heat. That then goes onto that plate. I'm not trying to make too much noise. You then have buzz bars. Now, full bespoke custom buzz bars within the, the Felton battery packs. So there's no cables linking stuff together. Everything is a proper bolted on buzz bar, which means long-term it will be reliable with no issues. And there's like little link bars that go between the modules. And there's some real funny shaped buzz bars here, um, which are complete bespoke custom buzz bars, but they have a massive importance within the battery pack to keep it long-term reliable. And you'll see that as we build this into battery packs on the next episodes to come. Within there we have safety disconnect. Now, this is a key thing for if you want to do work on the battery pack, you can pull that safety disconnect knowing there's no power coming out of the battery pack at all, so you cannot hurt yourself. Also, emergency services have got a point they can pull because it sits right in the front of the front of the pack. You have a blow-off valve. Now, this is pressure equalization. So as you go up and down big hills and all that stuff, it makes sure the pressure stays equal within the battery pack. And obviously, if the worst was ever to happen, this is the exit point for any hot gases coming out of the battery pack which in the Mini is put in a position where the old radiator would have been, so it's not pointing towards the passengers in any way at all. You also have contactors in the pack, which are obviously safety, so they can open and close, and they can also do something called a pre-charge, which is it shuts the contactor, shuts a smaller contactor with a pre-charge resistor to bring all the caps up and all the electrical components up to a set voltage before shutting the main contactors. Just mean the electrical components have a lot longer lifespan. And then obviously I showed you the harness, this is the bit that plugs into the BMS, and then all of these 
go to every single little module to do all the monitoring. Now we're going to move on into the inside and underside of the Mini. Now, part of the system that's developed at Felton is they have an under tray which goes up under the car and it has coolant lines in it which go to the bi-directional charger, but I'll get to that in a minute. It also has data lines running down and the cable that goes up to go into the gear selector, which is quite an important thing. It's a tactile part, which most of you will have some respect for, but try and keep the Mini looking as original as possible. So when you look in the car, you don't know necessarily it's electric converted. So this is a drive, a neutral, and you lift up, pop into reverse. And if you look closely on there, little British flag. Because obviously all of this stuff is assembled and made in England. There's some bits that are brought in from China and Italy. There's a lot of parts that come from the US as well. And there's a lot of CNC work and all those bits are all manufactured in the UK, which is absolutely great. We then have a new throttle pedal, which goes in the, real, the original position, which is a Heller pedal. Um, which I don't really need to talk about that, it's a throttle pedal. And then you have gauges. Now these are on like a little mountain plate for now just to show you. And um, so you have miles per hour, which they also have kilometers an hour as well. For those of you in Europe, we have kilowatts. So this is how much power you're drawing and how much power you're putting back in. So you can see how much regen you're putting back into the battery pack, how much power you're putting in that battery pack when you go full, full power um, and try and get this thing to do as fast as zero to 60 as possible, which I think, what's the fast you've got it to do, Nick? What, six-ish? Around six. Yeah. And that's because, mainly because we can't get enough grip. So Nick's done loads of work on the VCU software to try and get as much grip as possible. But the wheel, wheels are pretty narrow on the Mini, so you're always fighting with grip. You've also got temperature in here. So you've got battery temperature and motor inverter temperature. I tend to do inverter temperature just because that's the bit that's the most delicate. Um, so that will max out 80 degrees so you know if you're getting a bit too warm. We have HV cables which link the front and back. And I say they link the front and back because we have a rear battery pack as well. So we have to link from the front pack to the rear pack and back to get that voltage up to our 400 volt. But that all comes pre-terminated. You don't just get a length of orange cable. That actually gets built and shipped as part of the kit. And then we have heating because in the UK it's, it's bloody cold in the winter. Um, and you want to be able to drive these vehicles all year round. Unlike before they were electric, when they weren't reliable and you couldn't use them in the winter, you now can. Um, so this has a heating element inside, so it takes HV in. It basically has a heater in here, a bit like the blow heaters you might find in old workshops and stuff like that, um, or a bit like a toaster, really. It's just a glorified toaster. Um, but that kicks out quite a lot of heat instantly into the cabin, and it also has these, which go up to the vents for the windscreen, so it demists. And I said demist. This, the Mini, will actually demist, which is a big surprise for most people ever driven a classic Mini, because they were always awful with demisting and you're always rubbing the windows or having the windows crack down all the time. We have wiring harnesses, which once again seems like the most boring component in the world and I don't really know if I can go in much detail on a wiring harness because I think most of you get pretty bored pretty quickly. Um, but the key thing is that the wiring harness is probably fundamentally the most important component in any build. Because if one of these goes wrong, they're an absolute nightmare to fault find. Um, if you've got a loose pin or a bad connection, it takes hours and hours to fault find a wiring harness. So the team at Felton actually produce all of these in-house and then they test them all on a special machine and do wiggle tests and what sort of stuff to make sure that these are good, reliable, and they last for the lifetime of the car. Also really high-grade motorsport connectors um, just to make sure we have reliable harnesses. But the key thing there is that all of those actually have connectors on them. They're not loose wires with labels. They are all plug and play. So there's no, when I start rebuilding this Mini, or me and Nick start rebuilding this Mini, we're not gonna have to try and work out which bits we cut and splice together because everything will just plug into place, which would be absolutely great. This thing down here, this little baby, which I will lift it up, is called a charger DC to DC. Now, in some builds, you'll find that the charger and DC to DC is separate, um, which obviously is more expensive in two parts with two lots of HV wiring. So this is a combined unit, charger and DC to DC. We actually made for Felton to their specification, I suppose, and it has liquid cooling, which is why there's the pipes that run under the floor to keep it cold instead of it being air cooled. Now, the key thing about this is, is the first thing is it replaces the alternator. So when it was burning old dinosaurs, it would turn an alternator, which would charge up the 12 volt battery at say 13.8 volts. This takes a high voltage current from the main battery pack, which can be anything from say 300 to 400 volts, depending on state of charge, converts that to around 13.8 volts to keep the 12 volt battery topped up. And that's because you have to maintain the original mini wiring system. So all the headlights, indicators, wipers, the horn, all those sort of bits, as well as the EV system. So 
the Orion battery management system and the contactors, they all run on 12 volts. So 12 volt is still key in any electric vehicle. Also, this takes AC in, converts it to DC to charge up the battery packs from one of those wall EVSE chargers. And this will output about 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So it's probably what, three and a bit hours for a full charge in the mini. Maybe a little bit less because the chance are you'll never take it down to zero, even though I have done in the past. Um, but the other exciting thing with this, it will actually output 3.3 kilowatts of AC out. So you can run things like a header or if you're away camping, if you had hair. Um, you could also run things like a coffee machine, which is what one of the guys drone likes doing with his little little espresso coffee, eh, Nick? Yeah, <laughs> likes a little, little espresso. Yeah, he loves his little espresso. Um, or you could charge another car off of it, potentially, or maybe run some speakers if you want to have a rave with an electric mini. The possibilities are endless. We have a charge port with a flap, which is a key thing. You have a little pop thing there and it opens up, so your charge port is hidden, and it actually goes in the original place on the mini where the charge port would have gone, which I know the team at felt, and it was an absolute nightmare for them. They had to redesign everything to make it to fit in the same size hole. Uh, obviously, another box of bolts and another bits for the 12 volt system there to wire into the battery pack. When we move on, we have the rear battery box here. So this is three modules. There was five in the front, which makes this a 96S battery pack in total, which gives it a nominal voltage of about 350 volts, which is enough to kill you. Anything above 60 volts-ish is classed as HV. So this is very much HV. But the reason for that is it makes it run a lot more efficiently. And if you've noticed, some of the other OEMs have now even been going higher voltages that up to 800, 900 volts, because it means basically they can run a higher voltage but pull a lower amperage, which means thinner wires, less heat generation, slightly more efficiency. Um, we've capped at 400 volts just because components are available at the 400 volt range. As soon as you start going up to the 800 volt range, there's limited components available and they're really pricey still. So we're not there yet to move up to, to that range. So we have our three modules here which get linked in series. Obviously we have the relevant buzz bars for them and the cooling plates with the pads. We have another BMS because on all the systems that Felton do um, and that we're working on with them is the BMSs are inside the battery pack. BMSs are not waterproof. And with the European standards, the BMS should always be inside the battery pack. You shouldn't have high voltage coming out of the battery pack when the vehicle's powered down. And I'll say there's so many little cables of BMS. Imagine bringing them all out into an outside BMS. You end up with like 96 wires coming out of different places to external BMSs, which is not particularly fun and a huge wiring headache. Also, you have metal battery packs. So this one here drops in where the spare wheel was on the Mini and actually picks up on the rear subframe points and then the lid. And obviously, we have a boot for the Mini, which needs to be painted as well. Now, if you've liked this walk around and enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button, as I said before. And on the next episode, we're gonna do a lot more around getting the vehicle prepped and finished and start building this kit up with the Felton team. And then further on down the line, we'll get it all fitted back in the car and get it out on the road. Thanks for watching. See you soon.